Nisha. I'm from Five Creative, and in this chapter, chapter ten of Dear Mr. Kimmer, I play the roles of Mrs. Sherman and Pa. I'm also the leader, linguist, and technician of this chapter. My name is Adiba. I'm from Five Creative, and I will be the narrator of the last chapter of the novel, Dear Mr. Kilmer. Hi, my name is Afika Bakisha from Five Creative. My role in this chapter, which is chapter 10 in Dear Mr. Kilmer novel, are Hannah Shimmer and Jeremy Snipper. Hi, hi, Assalamualaikum. My name is Nufara Alia from Five Creative. So, in this chapter, chapter 10, my role are Mr. Shimmer. Medit and Mr. Garrison. Assalamualaikum and hi. My name is Mama Azza Azwa from Five Creative and my role for the MKS Richard. Richard was too stunned to say anything. He did not even cry. How could Mr. Kilmer be dead? Richard had just received a letter from him that morning. With great compassion, the Shermers drew Richard into the house. Mr. Shermer gently handed Richard a copy of a newspaper from Sioux City. The large headline glared at Richard, Beloved American Poet Killed in Battle, right in the middle of the page with a handsome rectangular border around it, was printed Mr. Kilmer's famous poem, Trees. To the poem was a photograph of Mr. Kilmer in his sergeant's uniform. He had thick, swept-back hair, alert eyes, a fine moustache, and a strong, decisive chin. Richard detected just the hint of a smile on his lips, a warm, kind smile. The picture startled Richard. He had been friends with this man for more than a year. How strange it was to see his face only after he was dead. At first, Richard did not think he could bring himself to read the article telling how Mr. Kilmer had died. But he had to know. He had to at least try to understand. The article said it had happened in the early dawn of July 30. The Allied guns from the Ain River to Chateau Thierry all roared at once. After months of brutal trench warfare, the Yanks were finally on the attack in force. The Germans replied with showers of rockets and flares. German snipers were hiding in the tall grass all around. Many of Kilmer's comrades had already been mowed down by enemy fire, like grain before a treasure. Sergeant Kilmer crossed the crest of a small hill. I see one red hat young! Joyce Kilmer was struck in the head by the bullet. Instantly, he sank to the already blood-soaked earth of the battlefield. Dodging the sniper's fire, his buddies carried his body away to a safe place behind the ridge. There, a medic looked at him briefly. There is nothing we could do to save him. Sergeant Kilmer's comrades all knew of his most famous poem, so they wanted to bury him under a tree. But they could not find a whole tree standing anywhere in that war-shattered landscape. They settled on a tree stump at the edge of a grove called the Wood of the Burnt Bridge, near the Ouk River in France. As Richard finished reading the article, the reality of Mr. Kilmer's death started to sink in. Even so, Richard was surprised to feel no grief. In fact, he seemed to feel nothing at all. Then, he became aware of something in his hip pocket. It was the letter he had written to Mr. Kilmer just a little while ago. The letter he had been on his way to the post office to mail. But now, there was no one to send it to. Suddenly, the tears began to well up, but Richard could not break down and cry in front of the Shermers. He just could not. He hastily thanked them for letting him know, said goodbye, and fled their house. He ran through the streets of Turtle Lake and along the road leading out of town. He did not stop running until he reached his favorite oak tree overlooking the train tracks. He climbed up to the highest branches he could possibly reach. He did not see another human being anywhere, nor any sign of any approaching train. 
Richard was truly alone. Now it was safe to cry. Richard clutched the unsent letter to his chest. An awful sense of futility swept over him. He thought about the question he had asked Mr. Kilmer in his letter. What do poets and poetry do to make the world better? Richard whispered to himself between sobs. I will never write another poem. Never. He climbed down from the tree, walked the rest of the way home, and went up to his room. He took out pencil and paper and wrote down the title of his poem, In Memory of Sergeant Joyce Kilmer. Then, with the calmness that surprised him, he set down his lines. A precious little world has died, a world of lovely rhyme and song, never ever to be sung. I must be brave. I must be strong. A precious little world has died for what is every human soul. If not a world all by itself, let teardrops roll, let set bells toll. A million little worlds have died, so fighting everywhere will cease, or so I'm told. But think it strange, a million worlds for one world's peace. A precious little world has died. Let children cry, let widows sigh. How could you die, my little world, until you simply told me why? Richard read over his poem with a strange, sad kind of satisfaction. He wanted to share it with somebody, but there was no point in showing it to Pa or even to Angie. They had never understood his friendship with Mr. Kilmer, much less his desire to write poetry. The Shermers, of course, they would understand. The next day, Richard went to the Shermers' house, sitting with Hannah and her parents in their little parlor. Richard read his poem to them. When he was finished, Hannah cried quietly. Even Mr. Shermer shed a small tear. His wife walked over to him and put her arm around him comfortingly. Richard, what are you going to do with this poem? I don't know. I used to send my best poem to Mr. Kilmer. That won't do. It is not enough. I don't understand. There are many boys from the lake fighting in this war. Some have died already. The town is full of mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers who feel just the same way like you do. They need to read your poem. Your words mean a great deal to the people of this town. Coming from one of their own. But how can I share it with people? Well, the Turtle Lake Weekly might print it, Richard. Richard felt an odd wave of panic. He was not quite sure why. Then everybody will see it. Isn't that the idea? Richard knew he could never explain how scared he was at the idea of having his poem in print, and the Shermers firmly insisted that Richard take his poem over to the newspaper office right that very minute. It just might make next week's issue. Hannah walked with Richard to the newspaper office. It was a one-room operation with a desk, a printing press, and a typewriter. They found old Mr. Garrison setting type by hand. He was the newspaper owner and also its sole employee. Can I help you? It's written a poem about Mr. Kilmer. Give it to him, Richard. As Mr. Garrison started to read the poem, Richard fled the office. Maybe he won't print it. Don't you want him to? Hannah, you don't understand. If my poem went up in the print, Pa will see it for sure. Maybe he like it. You don't know my pa. I enough of an embarrassment to him already. During the next few days, father and son went about their farm work in their usual stern silence. Richard said nothing about his poem. He just kept hoping that Mr. Garrison would not print it. The paper always came out early Tuesday morning. Richard walked into town at dawn so he could be at the newspaper office when it happened. The very minute the first bundle of papers hit the sidewalk, he bought a copy. Richard looked anxiously at the front page. He did not see his poem anywhere. 
Instead, he saw that Mr. Garrison had written a nice obituary for Joyce Kilmer. But when Richards came to the end of the obituary, his eyes widened. The last line read, For a tribute by a local poet. Turn to page 3A. Quickly, he turned the page. Oh no! There it was, square in the middle. Richard's heart sank. He knew that Pa would see the poem when the paper was delivered to his house later in the day. Richard walked wearily home and joined his father in the farm work. Several times during the day, he was on the verge of telling his father about the poem. That way, it would not come as a complete shock. But Richard could not bring himself to say anything. After they finished the last chores, Pa stopped at the mailbox and picked up the day's mail. Among a handful of bills was the newspaper. Pa scanned the front page as he and Richard walked towards the house. Richie, it says here your poet friend was killed. Did you know that? Yeah, I did. He did not want to be around when his father saw his poem. Without another word, he strode ahead of his father into the house. The screen door slammed closed behind him, and he walked up the stairs to his room. He went inside, sat down on the edge of the bed, and waited for the inevitable. Can I have a word with you, Rich? I guess... I've never told you much about my brother, Roland. You never have, Pa. Well, he was a lot like your brother Gus. Had some idea that he had lived forever, like nothing would ever get the best of him. Don't get me wrong, he was a fine man. He would have made a terrific farmer. I don't think a day goes by when I don't imagine him working this land alongside you and me. Oh, how you'd love him, Richie, and how proud of his nephew he had been. Richard's heart leaped up in his throat. He wanted to thank Pa for saying such a beautiful thing, but he just could not speak. But then came 98 and the war with Spain. I was way too young to enlist. Not that I'd have done it anyway. The whole thing seemed stupid to me. Just an excuse for Uncle Sam to grab up a lot of land that didn't belong to him. But Roland was all heated up about doing his patriotic duty. So he signed up and went. Probably no more than three or four boys from Twitter Lake signed up. They all joined the Navy except for Roland. He was the only one to fight on land in Cuba. And he was the only one to die. He was killed in the Battle of El Kani on July 1st. It was a great American victory. I'll never forget what one of the big city papers wrote about that battle. American casualties were slight. My brother was not a slight casualty. Suddenly, Richard's father began to sob. Richard was shaken. He had never seen his father cry before. He rose from his bed and sat down beside Pa, putting his arm around his shoulders. As I watched them lower his coffin in his grave, I kept whispering to myself, A world is gone. A world is dead and gone. How did you know, Richie? How did you know those words? Richard did not say anything. There was nothing else to say. At last, Pa understood why Richard wrote poems. What was more important, now Richard understood why he wrote them too. The war came to an end in mid-November. The Allies were victorious. The day the news reached Turtle Lake, Richard picked up a copy of the Sioux City newspaper on his way home from school. He showed it to Angie and Pa. The three of them passed the newspaper around the living room pouring over the story about the end of history's most terrible war. Suddenly, Pa broke out laughing. <laughs> What's so funny, Pa? I'm just thinking about poor Gus 
still training and working his tail off getting ready for a war that's over and done he still got a lot of time left to serve in the army and he's going to hit every minute of it richard and angie started laughing too partly at the joke fate had played on gus but mostly from joy the danger to gus was over and so was the danger to otto he came home to a parade and a hero's welcome just like all the other brave soldiers from turtle lake Richard knew that anti-German feelings would linger for a while in the little town, but they would not last forever, not without a war, to keep them alive. As winter approached, Richard divided his days between school and farm work. He also spent as much time as he could with Hannah and the Shimmers, and of course, he kept writing poetry. Richard's poetry became a regular feature in the Turtle Lake Weekly, but because his poetry usually dealt with farm life, Richard never submitted a poem without first sharing it with his father. It became almost a nightly ritual. After dinner, Richard and Pa would sit beside the fire and Richard would read his latest poem aloud. With his keen understanding of farming and the land, Pa often had a correction or suggestion to make. Richard found his father's ideas as helpful as Mr. Kilmer's had been. Other times, Pa would simply enjoy the poem without comment or criticism. He would say it with a smile and a nod. That's good, son. That's really good. Before we end this video, a very special thank you to Puan Hazina Binti Abu Bakar, our leader, technician, and also our linguist, Nisha, all the group members, my younger sister, Amira, for helping me record this video right now. And lastly, all the people who are watching this video, thank you so much for sparing your time. Then I want to thank all my members. They helped me a lot. Especially uh, our leader, Nisha. Okay, thanks guys. So, how is it? Hmm, yeah, the end is so sad, right? I would like to say thank you to my group members for the cooperation and support during this project and to those who directly or indirectly involved. Thank you. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Me and my group members worked really hard to put this video together in order for you guys to understand the summary of chapter 10 a little bit more better through the concept of our video which is stop motion. We also tried our very best to incorporate the three C's in our video which is convey it, converse it and comprehend it. One of the main reasons why we chose stop motion as an idea is because it seemed like a very vibrant and colourful idea. One of my group members, Adiba, drew all of the drawings and she has incorporated a lot of colour in her drawings on purpose to make it more vibrant and to prevent you guys from getting bored and keep you guys entertained throughout the whole video. In short, just to keep you guys alive till the end of the video. So I hope we succeeded in doing that um, and I was also want to take this opportunity to thank all of my group members Azad, Farah, Afika and of course Adiba. Azad had a lot of issues with his internet connection but nevertheless by hook or crook he would still send me all of his videos and voiceovers. Um, Farah and Afika worked really hard on their pronunciations and voice tones. They were constantly sending me voice messages, is this right, is that right? And of course, Adiba, it is because of your drawing skills and knowledge about stop motion that this entire video is a success. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank Teacher Hazel for making all of this possible. Um, and all of you who spared your time to watch our video, I hope you guys learned something and took back something from our video.